Good evening and welcome and my apologies that I came on air and then quickly pulled the plug and left again. The reason? I've been listening to my laptop with my earphones in and when I then came to play the laptop for the live stream no sound came out at all so I panicked. Called in the 18 year old and he remedied the fact that the earphones meant you were hearing nothing so we started again. Maybe sometimes God wants us to listen and we're not tuned in properly. May these evening prayers help us to be such. O oh God, make speed, speed, speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord who is good, whose mercy endures for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless the Lord's name. Proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day. Declare the glory of the Lord among the nations and the wonders of the Lord among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord who is coming, who is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading, continuing in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 57, verses 1 to 13. The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away while no one understands. For the righteous are taken away from calamity and they enter into peace. Those who walk uprightly will rest on their couches. But as for you, come here, you children of a sorceress, you offspring of an adulterer and a whore. Whom are you mocking? Against whom do you open your mouth wide and stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, the offspring of deceit, you that burn with lust among the oaks under every green tree, you that slaughter your children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks? Among the smooth stones of the valley is your portion. They, they are your lot. To them you have poured out a drink offering, you have brought a grain offering. Shall I be appeased for these things? Upon a high and lofty mountain you have set your bed, and there you went up to offer sacrifice. Behind the door and the doorpost you have set up your symbol, for in deserting me you have uncovered your bed. You have gone up to it, you have made it wide, and you have made a bargain for yourself and them. You have loved their bed, you have gazed on their nakedness. You journey to Molech with oil and multiplied your perfumes. You sent your envoys far away and sent down even to Sheol. You grew weary from your many wanderings, but you did not say it is useless. You found your desire rekindled and so you did not weaken. Whom did you dread and fear so that you lied and did not remember me or give me a thought? Have I not kept silent and closed my eyes, and so you do not fear me? I will concede your righteousness and your works, but they will not help you. When you cry out, let your collection of idols deliver you. The wind will carry them off. A breath will take them away. But whoever takes refuge in me shall possess the land and inherit my holy mountain.
go to the superb choir and congregation of First Plymouth United Church of Christ, Lincoln, Nebraska, as they sing Horatius Boner's hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. I suspect that it was my failed attempt to get started with no sound that threw everybody from finding us so glad that folk have eventually slipped into this virtual chapel. Our New Testament reading comes from St John chapter 7 verses 37 to 46. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, this is really the prophet. Others said, this is the Messiah. But some asked, surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the temple police went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, why did you not arrest him? The police answered, never has anyone spoken like this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I chose the hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say for its line, come unto me and drink. Inspired by 
verse 37 of tonight's gospel reading. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Thirst, literal thirst, is such that the longer we're thirsty, the more we pine for the refreshment to that thirst. Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. By contrast, is it not so that sometimes when we're offered a drink, it's more that we wish to be sociable rather than at the time are actually thirsty. So would you like a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a glass of wine or whatever? We don't really absolutely thirst for it, but we say yes, so that we might be polite, so that we might take up the gracious offer. And actually, if we're used most of the time to getting our own drink, it is really nice to be offered one. And of course, together, drinking socially. One of the many things that we are missing during this terrible long lockdown is, I'm sure, meeting up with folk for a coffee, meeting up with folk for a glass of wine or a glass of beer or whatever. And it isn't so much that we absolutely thirst and are desperate to drink, but that coming together and over that cup of coffee, that glass of wine, opening up our hearts, sharing, conversing, listening and speaking. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Our coming to Jesus then is surely a blend of both those reasons. One, that without his refreshment, his living water, we will literally be parched. We need him and we come because we are thirsty. But surely there's a little bit of that other, isn't there? Because he invites us and offers us a drink, we respond not just to be polite, but through gratitude to engage with him over that glass of living water, to share what's on our hearts over that glass of living water, to listen to another and, of course, to listen to him. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving water. May God enable us in Christ to find refreshment, to know ourselves heard and open our ears and hearts to listen. Amen. Sunday night's New Testament song is always the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. And I absolutely love our friends at First Plymouth Church, Lincoln, Nebraska, as they sing that wonderful canticle of the turning, taking the words of Mary and affirming it of the God who really wants to turn the world upside down.
Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, by triumphing over the power of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, praise him in the eternal city in which he is the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, reigning in glory. Cloud and deep darkness proclaim your holiness. Radiant light shows forth your truth. Jesus has entered the cloud of your presence. He has taken his seat at the right hand of majesty. Perfect sacrifice, he has put away sins. Merciful high priest, he pleads for our weakness. Always our brother, he prepares our place in heaven. Ruler of all, he establishes your reign. Dawning light for the righteous, hope of sinners. Blessed are you, sovereign God high over all. Amen. As evening falls, we bring to God the needs of all the world. And as we come to pray with Alison Hadley for the Ark, and particularly those two mums battling with COVID-19, Alison shares with us that Gemma has DVT in her lung and one in her leg, sorry, in, in her leg and one in her lung, and is home with blood thinners. Grateful for our prayers, we continue to pray for that young mum. Let us pray. We pray for all Christians that we may preach the reign of God in word and deed, that we may be the people who thirst for our Lord, in him find that thirst quenched, and in his company both share what is on our hearts and listen to what he says alongside the needs of others who drink with us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the nations, that the peace of God may dispel the rumblings of war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our communities, that our lives may be marked by the spirit of conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer, that the resurrection of Christ may be their hope. We continue to pray for all facing the challenge of COVID-19, all whose work and voluntary efforts draw them into risk, that we might be spared it. For those we know to be battling with COVID-19, its effects or long COVID, among them the Reverend Samuel Salungwe and his household, the Reverend Liz Adams, and her household, and Bethany, daughter of Donna Gordon, our Synod Safeguarding Officer. With Alison Hadley, we continue to pray with Gemma and the other young mum with COVID, thanking you for Gemma's homecoming, but asking for continued strength and healing. We pray with Alison and others like her running nurseries in deeply worrying times. We continue to pray with Celia for her grandson Alfie, particularly in his battle with shingles. With Alison and Paul for James. With Jenny and family for Brian. With Andy for his dad, Michael. With Prince for his wife, Cheryl, for the Reverend Michael Pevy, and with Liz, for Ryan, preparing for hospital, and for his family, dreading the prognosis. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the bereaved, particularly praying with the Reverend Douglas Watson and all who grieve for his wife, Sheila, with Donna Gordon and all who grieve for her sister, Faye, for the Reverend Martin Ferris and all who grieve for his mum, Marion, and for the family of the Reverend Ralph Evely and those closest to John Shaw and all who grieve for him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all mercy, hear our evening prayer. Bring us safely through this night that we may give you praise with the coming of the dawn. We ask this through Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. As we have been on three occasions, hopefully tonight the fourth, another member of our online congregation should in a moment be joining us to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. If you are happy for this to happen to you, then please respond positively if you get a message from me inviting you to do so. We await the arrival of the surprise member of the congregation and see if she wants to. Yes, she's Hi. there. <laughs> Alison, Alison Hadley from Abbots Road Church in <laughs> Leicester. Alison, lovely to have you with us. And for this tonight to be a symbol of us being together in prayer and in particular your news of Gemma and our prayers for the art. Bless you. This is certainly a, Alison. a symbol of hope for me. So it's wonderful to, to be invited. So thank you. Thank you. Not in Dutch or Farsi, mm -hmm. but in, in Leicester English, Absolutely. Alison. Will you lead us in the Lord's I Prayer? I will do that. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. Amen indeed. If you're willing to sit and smile with us as we go to our Rose Hill Church in Chesterfield, where they are in the early days of live streaming their worship, just uh, retired Minister Sue Powell, the organist, and our good friend John, who joins us here night by night for prayers. We listen to their organist playing the voluntary at the close of this morning's live stream worship pictures at an exhibition.
Thank you for joining us, Alison, for a service that began with music played by the organist up in the Thumberland, ended in Chesterfield, Derbyshire, and the Lord's Prayer in Leicester. Good to be together. God bless Thank you, Alison. Goodbye, everybody. Good night, everybody. God bless. Good, good night. <laughs>